I've been analysing chess for over 15 years now and avidly watching it on YouTube as a fan for a similar amount of time. And in all that time, I've never seen what I saw in this game. Now this is the part where you're maybe thinking, how old is this hobo looking dude? Because by the way, I'm trying to grow some kind of beard here due to be shaving it soon to grow a moustache for November, but that's another story. Anyway, I'm 32 years old for the record. So this game here, Hans Niemann versus Alexandra Ostrovsky, was played in 2020, and it's a very high accuracy game. First came to the attention of everyone through the suspicious video that Yosha did, or it was a video of suspicious games, and this one came back as 100% in her analysis with Gambit Man. Now the chess.com game review tool brings this one back as 95.2, so a high accuracy game regardless. Now let's see what happened, Hans had the black pieces and you're in for a treat. So e4 was played, e5 followed, knight f3, knight c6, and now bishop c4 goes in for the Italian game. So knight f6 in response, invites knight g5, the fried liver, black then goes d5, etc. But d3 simply played by white, standard stuff. And now Hans here goes pawn to h6, the main move is bishop c5, developing, preparing to castle, coming outside the pawn chain, bishop e7 also very solid, but this h6 move, as well as taking away the g5 square, there's some aggressive intentions here of going g5 if white castles too soon. So c3 now from white, standard stuff, prepares d4 later, sometimes b4, d6 from black, and now knight b to d2, this is what I'm saying about white just holding off castling, fearing the g5 move. And now Hans goes a different direction with knight b to d2 on the board, he goes pawn g6 here. So now we had d4 from white, and this isn't the best move. You know, better is sort of castling, developing some pieces, rook e1. When you go like this, you immediately weaken e4, and you give black quite a few different options to take advantage. So Hans carries on with bishops g7 here. You'll note there's a kind of question mark exclamation here. So the computer wanted to take on d4 immediately, but we won't go down that route. Both players now castled, and now we see takes on e5 here. And this is quite an important move, because say you go rook to e1, for example, a standard looking developing move. Well, the problem is that black takes on d4, Pawn recaptures, you don't normally want to give white the big centre, but this is the quick follow-up. You get d5 in, and because you're hitting bishop and pawn, you're forcing that resolution of the tension, say something like this. Good game for black, white's got the Isolani here in the centre of the board, you can target that pawn later. So coming back here, takes on e5 was played, and now Hans plays a more ambitious move here. So taking with the knight is the most kind of classic positional move because you improve this piece which is slightly worse than this piece arguably and because you're hitting the bishop you're forcing an exchange, there's no knight to d4 and this is just a decent position for black, you've, I mean it's fine for white but you've solved your opening problems here. So pawn takes was played, more ambitious, now we had pawn to a4 gaining some space on the queen side. And now we see Hans going queen to e7 here, and he then follows with queen to f6, which is interesting, wasting a tempo. And it begs the question, could he have started with knight to h5, which we soon see? And the answer is yes. If white now goes b4, you can go queen f6. So he could have done that. I want to point that out because he goes queen to e7, now we get b4, and now rook d8. So he cleared the square for the rook, makes sense. White moves the king, no, uh, queen sorry, now knight h5 came, targeting this square here, but it all wastes the tempo with the queen because the queen soon comes to f6. So rook e1 now played. Obviously develops the rook, but also frees the f1 square for this knight to pivot back, sometimes the bishop, and once the knight moves, you open up this dark squared bishop as well. Now queen f6, this is the move I was talking about. And it's a kind of waiting move, because if you go bishop to g4 straight away, then h3 can come, the knight still covers this one, and you've either got to take, which is good for white, or retreat, and you've wasted a tempo. So queen f6, just a kind of waiting move. Now we had the knight retreating back, and now Hans goes bishop to g4. 
Once that knight's gone, there's no h3. Obviously, you can shatter the pawn structure. Really good for black. So instead, we had this knight now hopping back to d2. If you cover with bishop e2, by the way, it's a bit passive. And also, this knight now hits f4, hits that bishop. Big initiative for black. So the knight drops back here, and now we had this knight sinking in on f4, classic move. Knight e3 was played, hits this bishop, so it dropped back to e6, and now white carries on developing. Again, the computer doesn't love it as most precise. It wanted captures here, but okay, just human chess. Now bishop f8, so it covers this long diagonal, prepares to challenge this powerful piece, and also you're no longer just staring at your own e5 pawn. So the bishop took on e6, queen recaptures, and now you'll see the computer doesn't like this next move. It wants knight f3 here just to add some protection around the king. But knight b3 was played, a more ambitious move, buying the b5 square, and there's some logic to this. You want to go b5, exchange the bishops, sink a nice knight. But the problem is that black can cover with pawn to b6 and then turn the attention to the king side and start attacking your king, which is now a knight short since you rotated it around to the other side of the board. Now this next move might look slightly strange. So g3 is kind of logical to kick the knight, but then you weaken all the light squares, you know, swish cheese around the king, and you can also give this check. You've got access to this square and it's a bit uncomfortable. So white goes pawn to h4, looks weird pushing pawns on the side of the board where your king is. But the idea is that then you can go g3, and if the knight comes to h3, well, it's not sitting in front of the pawn, blockading it, etc. So a5 now from hands, not forced, but he wants to clarify things on the queen side. b5 kicked on, and now you could go knight b8 here, coming back to d7, and then some kind of journey into here potentially, but instead we had takes, takes, and knight e7 going on a different kind of route, and maybe one day Hans wants g5, knight g6 to get at that white king. So g3 now played. This was white's idea. This was the follow-up. And this is where Hans unleashes the first of four brilliant moves in a row. Now probably black was expecting maybe something like knight d3 here, but it's not a good move. Then rook d1 comes, and white's actually just taking over the initiative here. Or if you don't go to there and you come back here, well again, you're kind of backpedaling, where's the attack? So can you guess what move Hans played in this position here? So in this position, he played queen to h3. Double exclam, a brilliant move. So this is considered a brilliant move by chess.com's game review, gives it two exclamation marks, and we now see four of these brilliant moves in a row, and that's the thing that I've never seen in one game of chess. Four of these in a row. I've seen four in a game, even more than four in a game, but never four in a row. So we'll have to have a look at what conclusions we can draw from that at the end of this game, but first let's see what happened. So what's the idea? Well, if you take the knight, and this is actually the best way to play, actually, but white didn't do it. Well, then we recapture, we're kicking this one, and the best defensive move is knight g2. Now, you look like you want to go f3 straight away and mate the king, but the problem is the knight hops straight back and actually covers the square it just came from. Now things are just level. The attack's kind of, well, it's not fizzling out, but you can't bring more firepower in. It's just not the right move. So after the knight backpedals, then g5 is the best move. You want to rip open this g file if you possibly can. So h5 is best to keep all the files closed. Now queen g4 prepares f3 because this time the knight is pinned. But here's the key defense, which potentially white missed from afar, which is knight to d4. So you cover this f3 move. Now if it gets played, you take and queen e2. And if you pause here, do a piece count, material count, things are actually level, white's doing fine. It's just a roughly even position. And if instead in this position here, by the way, you try and sack rook for knight, well then this rook opens up laterally, again in f3. If f3, you can give that rook. And once again, white's doing fine here. So this is the problems for black to actually continue the attack if white finds these defensive moves. Black's still doing okay, but not easy to see all of that stuff. 
So instead of taking on f4, this is where instead the rook drops back to a1, so probably preparing to challenge down this d file here. And now can you guess the second brilliant move which Hans Niemann played in this position? So with black to play, Hans played pawn to g5. That idea I mentioned earlier, looking to rip open files and also opens up a square for this knight to potentially join the party. And now here white makes a fatal blunder. So again, you should go pawn h5, just to keep things closed as much as possible. But we have takes on g5, and this is where Hans now plays his third brilliant move. Again, if you want to think about what this move could be, then please have a think and pause. Okay, so this is the weird one for me. Hans simply takes back the pawn, right? You were maybe looking for something kind of crazy, etc. Now, chess.com is giving that as a brilliant move. I haven't looked into the details of when this kind of algorithm, would you call it, or the formula or whatever, drives a double X clam versus a single X clam, etc. Okay, it's giving the most obvious move on the board a brilliant move, but fine, that's the third brilliant move in a row. Now we have the D file challenge, and now here's the fourth brilliant move. Again, feel free to look for it. What does Hans play here? So he goes king to g7. Again, to my eyes, a pretty logical move because you're preparing rook h8. And sure enough, we had captures, rook recaptures. Now white finally takes the plunge and takes on f4. What else to do? But rook h8 and this move brought resignation from the white player. So why did they resign? Well, you're getting mated and you can't avoid it. So this is a threat of checkmate. So f3 is the only way to actually give the king some room, but then we check here, king f2, and you bring down the rook. Now you can either bring the king up to g3 or block with the knight, I'll show you both. This one the queen captures, king goes, you win the queen. Okay, this is completely lost anyway, plus we're about to mate using the queen coming to c3 all over. And if instead you don't block with the knight, you come to g3, well then we can take with check, King goes, and now you can mate like this. You can use the pawn to finish the job. So a really beautiful finish. Now, if we come back to those four brilliant moves in a row, what conclusions can we actually draw from this? So it started with queen to h3. So to go four brilliant moves in a row, it sounds kind of superhuman. You know, was Hans using an engine in this game? Was he just playing on his instincts? Obviously, that's for everyone to make their own judgments. But for me personally, when I look at this game, it does look like quite a human way to play. I would say this is the most brilliant move to go queen to h3. But if you backpedal the knight and once you see you can't go knight d3, then you don't have a ton of other options other than just being completely worse. And once you realize how complicated things get with this pawn recaptures, kicking the knight, then you can really start to see the appeal of this variation. And sure enough, it was good for hands to play. So queen h3 was the tough one. But after this rook a to a1, I would say g5 is very, very human. Captures, of course you take back. And then king g7 to use the h file. So all three of the brilliant moves following for me were really easy to find. But the queen h3 one, yeah, tough. Who knows if he knew used an engine. Nothing's been shown as evidence he did over the board yet. I don't believe he did personally. But like I said, these things are tough, could be very subtle. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to see the latest edition of the Cheating Scandal Saga, the documentary series I recorded, then check out the video on screen. Do subscribe to never miss a future video. And thanks very much for watching. See you soon.